Two, one, countdown. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you're with us today. We're going to talk about today, I've seen a lot of patients coming in lately with depression. I'm going to talk about different types of depression, uh, you know, depression versus clinical depression, and then some things that could be causing it, and then really what to do about it, which is the most important thing. So if you have any questions, the way this works is I will talk for 24 minutes. You, if you have any healthcare questions, can type it in on a platform that you're on. I will answer those questions at the break. And we take another 24-minute session, and then I answer more questions. So it's a great opportunity to get, get some healthcare questions answered. And hopefully, I'll, I'll give you something that you can take home with you and use. So whenever you guys are ready, I'm ready. <clears throat> hey, folks. Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am glad you're with me today. If you've listened to my shows in the past, I always try to base my shows on what I'm seeing in my practices what patients are coming in with. And I've, I've, lately, I've been seeing a lot of cases of depression. And it's been going on for quite a while, actually. It's been going on even since the, the pandemic. And uh, I just want to address these because it's, it's a pretty serious issue. And all of us at multiple times in our lives are going to suffer different types of depression. But I'm going to talk about some triggers. You're going to be surprised what can trigger it. You're going to be surprised what myths there are out there, what facts there are about it. But most importantly... What can you do to help yourself get better? I'm going to give you tools today that you can utilize to try to get over this. Now, you may need some other help as well, but these are things you need to implement. Now, the things I'm going to tell you to implement, you should be implementing anyway. It shouldn't be just because you have depression. These are things that you should be doing every day to help ward off a lot of health conditions, including depression. So there's depression, is clinical depression. Depression is something happens. I get in a car accident. I break up with my girlfriend. I, uh, my dog dies. Short-term depression, perfectly normal, perfectly acceptable, and actually it's, uh, it's healthy because you're able to experience emotion. When people can't experience emotion, that's a whole nother health issue. But I remember when my mom passed, thinking how happy I was that I felt so sad. Doesn't that sound weird? But I've known people that didn't have the relationship that, with their parents that I had with my parents, and I was happy that I had that relationship. I remember years ago, I was dating a girl, and we were out on a date, a bunch of people, and she goes, oh, my father died last week. What? I mean, just, she goes, oh, I never liked him. And I thought that was a very sad thing. And so experience depression can be actually a good thing because you're able, you had that uh, positive experience in your life. People that feel nothing, that's a whole other issue. We're not going to go down that road today. Clinical depression is when you don't get over it. Clinical depression is when it, it affects every aspect of your life, and it continues for a long period of time. And that's when there's actually changes oftentimes in the brain itself. So the brain can change its structure and its function. And we're going to talk about what that looks like and then things we can do to help that. So one of the myths... That is that you could just work through it. Suck it up, buttercup. You know, you're, you're weak, and all you got to do is uh, you know, fight through it. Hard work is not going to work on clinical depression. Now, it might work if it's uh, just regular depression. That's a regular. Because you can get your mind off it. Let's go out with some friends. Let's go watch a movie. Let's go do something that you enjoy doing. That might work short term. So these folk remedies and half-truth about uh, depression kind of still persists today. Throw yourself into work, you'll feel better. Mild case of the blues, that might work, but depression is a different animal. Overworking can actually be a sign of clinical depression, especially in men. Now, there is a difference between men and women when it comes to this. Men oftentimes uh, hide their emotions. I'm tough, I'm not gonna break down, and uh, you're gonna, we're gonna talk about statistics later about how men don't deal with it as well as women do. So another myth is not a real illness. It's just, uh, it's, but it's actually one of the top causes of disability. In some statistics, I've seen the top cause of disability. Now, it's still confused with ordinary sadness. Biological evidence of the illness comes from studies of genetics, hormones, nerve receptors, brain functions. The brain changes the way it works in clinical depression. And when that happens, we have to do work to get it to change back. When I went to school thousands of years ago, we were taught that when a brain cell is dead, it's dead forever, and there's nothing you can do about it. And I remember, I remember sitting in the classroom, I remember the day, thinking, wait a minute, what about somebody who has a stroke? 
they can have a stroke, and if, let's say, they're paralyzed on the right side of their body. That means the stroke was on the left side of their brain because the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. And so we would do rehab with the patients, and they'd get some function back, sometimes total function back. So I thought, wait a minute. I was just taught that brain cells are dead forever. How are they getting their function back? Well, the brain has this amazing capability called plasticity. Plasticity means like plastic. It can remold and reshape itself. So we used to think that brain cells were dead forever. It turns out your body's constantly regenerating brain cells. And if the damage to part of a brain is so bad, the brain has the capability, in some cases, to rewire itself, to wire itself around the damage. There are cases where people have brain surgery, a piece of their brain is removed, and yet they have full function. And that part of the brain controls a certain function. Other parts of the brain kind of step up and take over. And the research is ongoing on this, and it's really cool to see how the brain can rewire itself. So it is a real condition. The brain can be damaged and change its structure, and then we can try to change it back with proper therapies. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Men, we said, depressed men, their loved ones, oftentimes men, they don't know men are depressed. Men, being one of them, will hide that emotion. They may do things like, I'm going to work late. I'm going to work constantly. I'm going to be obsessed with a hobby. And it's a way to not deal with their emotions. And it's not a good place to be. Because, yeah, we're tough. We're, we're, we're tough guys, and we don't have to deal with those emotions. That's sissy stuff. It's not true, guys. It's okay to say you have a problem. It's okay to reach out. Most of the patients and in our clinic, you would think that most patients would be women because women are uh, demographic, 35 to 55. That's like the demographic for healthcare. But I'd say we have a majority, slight majority of men patients. And one of the reasons is because of these podcasts, because of radio shows, because of lectures that I do, books I write, uh, articles that I've pu published, Men read this, and, and it's almost like they're getting permission. You know what? Dr. Joe is pretty cool. He knows what he's talking about. I'm going to go see him and get well. And many times patients come in, and they're referred by the man in the family. Usually, again, I'm just giving you this, usually, um, women kind of dictate the health care of a family. And so women will say where to go, but many times men will send their wives or girlfriends or daughters in and say, go see Dr. Joe and his staff. Let them work on you. So it's nice that we're able to change the paradigm of healthcare by doing these talks, these workshops, podcasts, lectures, radio shows, because men are being more open and saying, you know what, I'm, it's okay to say that I have an issue. Sometimes men won't say they're depressed, but they'll be irritable, they'll be angry, they'll be restless, they'll lash out at others. Some men cope with depression through reckless behavior, through drinking, through, through drugs. Now, women do it too, but generally speaking, men more so than women. So guys, it's okay. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's your brain, and your brain did something, and now we've got to get the brain to do something else if we can. Another myth, that depression is just self-pity. Oh, woe is me. It's not, not that big a deal. Again, back to that suck it up thing. And mental toughness, uh, is, is, it's, it's quick to label anybody who becomes a whiner, and you say, oh, you're not tough enough. You're just whining about these issues. But people who have clinical depression are not lazy or simply feeling sorry for themselves. They cannot will themselves to get better. If I just thought a positive thought. If I just read this book. No, clinical depression is different. It's a mental illness and the problem is related to changes in the brain. But the good news is like other illnesses, it improves oftentimes with appropriate treatment. Now, we're going to talk about drugs in just a second. Uh, medication. Does that mean if you're, if you're depressed, you're on medication for the rest of your life? The answer is a resounding no in most cases. I would say most cases because not every case is going to fit the exact you know, cookie cutter pattern. But I've seen a lot of patients in my career that have depression, and we're going to talk about some of the little sneaky tricks that we use to get the body working again. Anybody can get depressed. doesn't matter who you are. We look at famous people. We look at people like Robin Williams, okay, who you thought the happiest guy in the world, funniest guy in the world, killed himself. Depression was part of that. And so many times you can't see depression. It's not like a broken arm or a black eye. You can't see it. It's inside. And some people can hide it. Well, case in point right there. So keep an eye out. If you're in a relationship with someone, any relationship, it doesn't have to be boyfriend, girlfriend, mother, father, sister, brother, spouse, whatever, 
coworkers, friends, they start to change. Now, everybody's going to have mood swings. I'm in a bad mood today. But when you start seeing them actually shift and change, that's when you have to start thinking there might be an issue here. And then start looking for some of those telltale signs. Is there more drinking? Is there drugs involved? Is there uh, they're not cleaning their house? They're not taking care of themselves. They're not looking physically like they used to. These are all signs to look for, and then you can consider talking about it. Now, just brace yourself. You can say to a friend, hey, listen, man, I notice you're not shaving. You're not showering anymore. Your house is a mess. You don't take care of your animal anymore, whatever it is. You think it could be depression. No, because one of the signs is lashing out. So usually when that happens, there's something wrong. It's not just that they suddenly decided they're not going to shave anymore or they're not going to clean their house anymore. Something's going on. So it can happen to anybody. You could be a football linebacker. You could be a ballerina. You could be a mom or a dad. You can be a kid. Often the first signs of uh, late teens and early 20s is when an episode uh, can occur and it can become a more serious issue. I am a huge fan of counseling. It's interesting because... In school, you'll learn about math and science, geography, trigonometry. You don't learn a couple of things. Number one is you don't learn about how to take care of yourself. And if I were to grand pool body universe, that would be required in every grade all the way across the board. How to take care of the nervous system, how to take care of the digestive system, how to look at your diet, what supplements might help the brain function, like vitamin B, for example, B12, B6, uh, how to eat, how not to eat, how to prepare food, how to shop. Uh, we don't learn about finances. We don't learn about checkbooks. I know I don't should balance a checkbook anymore, but we don't learn about finances, how to make money and how to save money. And we don't learn about how to have relationships. And those are the three things all of us do, no matter what your career, no matter what path you've taken. I was at a christening the other day and I sat and talked to the priest. And I thought, okay, he lives a different world. But he's got to take care of himself. He had a bit of a belly on him. And he says, oh, yeah, you're a nutrition guy. I really should eat better. And, you know, so we all have these same problems, whether you're a priest or a truck driver or a, I don't know, Olympic skater. I don't know. Anybody can get depressed. So start looking in your teens and be careful around that because it's a tough time. And I'll relate to you a little story. Uh, we do a lot of social media posts. Okay, we post two, three times a day sometimes. And we get about five or 10,000 followers a day joining us on social media because the stuff we post is amazing it's great but there are people that lash out and these are the trolls and it happens to everyone i've spoken to famous actors i've spoken to athletes i've spoken to regular folks there's always going to be a troll who's going to make a comment about your hair about your clothes about your nose you're an idiot you're a jerk i realize as an adult there's nothing to worry about delete move on but if you have a kid and this kid is being cyberbullied, and I didn't get it until this kind of happened when we just kind of took off in social media, that if I'm a 15-year-old kid, 13-year-old kid, and people are telling me I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I got a big nose, uh, I should hurt myself, I can see where that becomes a real serious issue. And so sometimes with social media, you have to unplug. If you can't have the maturity to handle it, you may have to unplug because it's not real. That's the whole thing. It's not real. And so, but you perceive it as real. Somebody tells you you're ugly, you believe them. So just be careful with that because social media can lead to depression. And just look, scrolling through social media, seeing everybody's posts. Oh my gosh, she's on vacation. He looks so great. They had the kids. Uh, oh my gosh, they went to that great restaurant. I don't get to do these things. Understand that that's a snapshot in time that's been edited and filtered and cropped. And you don't see what's going on in the real world in their lives. And again, I bring up Robin Williams as the perfect example. So don't think that everybody's life is as good as it looks. It never is. Just accept that. I know it's hard to do that. But social media, I find recently, has become a major link to depression. I've been in practice a long time, and I'm seeing it as an issue. So let's talk about some things we can do. Let's talk some positive stuff here, and we'll go continue on. You want to have a good diet when it comes to depression and all other illnesses. There's nothing that I've ever come across in my entire career that wouldn't benefit from better diet. And one thing we don't teach, don't teach correctly, is how to eat. 
So the body needs fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. That's where you're going to get your nutrients, your phytonutrients, your fiber, uh, your protein, your carbohydrates, your fats. It's all there. People, where do you get your protein from if you don't eat meat? Your body only needs about 8 to 10% of its total caloric intake is protein. A carrot is 6%. Steak is like 17, 20%. So you're getting way more protein by eating animal protein than you need. And that extra protein can be very dangerous. I've done shows on that in the past. So eating foods that are easy to digest can help the brain function more efficiently, can help you lose weight, help the bowels work more efficiently. Constipation can be related to depression. You know, the, we call the gut the second brain. So if you don't have good bacteria, good uh, um, probiotics and, and good uh, function of the nervous system, going to the digestive system, that's a problem. Maybe you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. All of these can affect brain function. And if it affects brain function, it's going to affect, it can lead to things like depression. So make sure you're going to the bathroom at least once a day, bowel function, preferably twice. Make sure you're eating a lot of fiber. Fiber does that. Eating animal proteins and animal, fi- animal products don't have any fiber in them, zero fiber in animal products. And you need that fiber to kind of push everything through and detoxify your body, clean it out. Uh, I take certainly Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source every day. Later on, I'm going to talk about a whole protocol that I put together for my patients that have emotional issues. But minimum supplements will be Super Greens and Essential Source. And you have to have the nervous system working. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, sciatica, muscle weakness, hand numbness, these are signs that there's something wrong with the nervous system. By far, the most common cause is pinched nerves. If I have a pinched nerve in my neck, it can cause hand numbness. I have that. I have a traumatic brain injury. I was hit by a car when I was 10, and I have some serious damage to my neck and my vertebrae. And every now and then, my middle finger feels like it's getting hot. And when that happens, I know it's my seventh cervical vertebrae that's pinching the nerve that goes to my middle finger. And I go see one of my doctors. They adjust my neck, and instantly, the heat goes away. So it's not pain. It's heat. It feels like, I, I, like I've, I've got, I'm, I'm burning my hand. So you have to look at the nervous system as the control center of everything. So if you have pain, there's something wrong with the nervous system. And pain can lead to depression, certainly chronic pain. But 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. So what I suggest you do, everybody, is get a neurological checkup. Come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Let's do an evaluation. Let's find out, A, what's causing your pain. Most common cause, by far, is pinched nerves. And my team of doctors are really good at fixing pinched nerves. And then let's see if there's a digestive issue. Maybe you're not absorbing nutrients. You're not passing out waste products. You're not processing food properly. Maybe you're not getting right enough nutrients. Let's get you on some supplements. Get you on certain foods. So to make an appointment, go to my website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. You can book an appointment right online. We can book you usually that same week, sometimes that same day. But drjoe.com, set up your appointment. We accept people with all insurances. Your insurance might not cover it, but we accept you. Uh, we accept cash patients, car accidents, sports injuries. My team is really good at getting to the cause of the problem. We can't help everybody. We don't always get it first time, but we're really good at getting to the cause of the problem without drugs and surgery. That's our approach. So knee pain, back pain, foot pain, come see us, drjoe.com. We'd love to see you. Normally the first visit is $940. For my listeners, I've reduced that to $299. Exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutrition evaluation. You're not going to get that, as far as I know, anywhere else, at any price. So $299, drjoe.com. And let's get the body tuned up, not just for depression, but for all health. But with depression, I find oftentimes if we get the nervous system, digestive system, and the diet straightened out, the patient responds dramatically well. They've been on medication. They've been on therapy. We add the physical component, the nutrition, the chiropractic, stomach work, and they see exponential improvement. That's why a lot of therapists will send their patients to us. I say, Dr. Joe, let's check you know, Bob's stomach and let's see if he's breaking down his food properly. Maybe his stomach is pushed up against his diaphragm and we need to pull that stomach back down. Maybe he's not absorbing B-complex. We have to stimulate his stomach acid. We have to get more stomach acid to break down the foods, get the amino acids to produce the neurotransmitters to absorb the B vitamins. So there's a whole protocol to physically treat the body. It would be like washing the car, but it's still out of alignment and it needs a tune-up. But you can keep washing it and washing it. It looks really good, but you still need to tune it up and make the alignment straight. So drjoe.com, we'd love to see you, not just for depression, but for your overall health care. 
So we said anybody can get depressed, and it can sneak up slowly on you. Depression can sneak up gradually, and it makes it harder to identify because you just think, oh, you know, Dr. Joe's getting old and, and curmudgeon -y. Bad days turn into the rut, and then you start skipping work, you start skip skipping schools, you start skipping social events. That's really a big one. I don't feel like going out. Now, as you get older, I don't feel like going out as much as I used to either. But if you can say, you know what, I have to go out and socialize, it's an important part of my health, and you do it, great. If you say it and you won't do it, then it might become a big issue, okay? Uh, there's different types uh, uh, of, of depression that goes on. There's malaise uh, that silently kind of undermines everybody's treatment, your career, your relationships. Depressions can become so severe, so debilitating, and it can really affect everything in your life, and including uh, dra dramatically shortening your life. So don't play games with this. This is not something you want to play games with. And the nice part now is that, of course, you can come see us. We can do... Uh, uh, online consultations as well, because I know this show goes all over the world. We can do online consultations, but even for therapy, uh, you can do online therapy now, which is really kind of cool. And you don't even have to see the therapist. I've had people say, I don't want anybody seeing me. I don't want the person to know who I am. That's okay. Go online, get a therapist in another state. And by the way, doctors, we are sworn to secrecy. Now, most of us keep that policy. Um, so don't worry about it. Get online if you have to. If you don't want to talk to the therapist, eye to eye on a Zoom call or something like that. You can just do a phone consultation. But I suggest getting under therapy. It's relatively inexpensive, um, and it's really something that's important when you start dealing with depression. But not just the therapy, uh, talk therapy, but also the physical, the chiropractic care, the nutrition, the dietary changes, the supplementation, the eating right, and eat, not eating the bad foods that can link to depression. Drugs, alcohol can make depression worse. Sugar makes depression worse. Artificial sweetener can make depression worse. And so you want to make sure you put together the whole plan, the whole package. And that's why we'd love to see you, for regardless of what your problem is, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, car accidents, we're really good at that. But it can also help the psyche by getting the body healthy as well, which kind of leads me into uh, you don't have to be on medication for the rest of your life. Medication is only one of the tools that should be used. If your therapist, doctor, treatment person only says drugs is the answer, I personally would suggest you get a second opinion. Let's get the nervous system working. The stomach. Let's talk about stomach for a second. Your stomach has one main job, and that job is to take proteins. Now, whether that protein comes from a steak or a piece of carrot, it looks like a ball of yarn. It unravels it and chops it up into something called amino acids. There's 20 amino acids that we have in our diet. The amino acid named tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain if there's B6 present. It should be B6 present if you're relatively healthy. Vitamin B6 combined with tryptophan creates 5-HTP. 5-HTP becomes serotonin. Serotonin makes you happy. Serotonin becomes melatonin, which helps you sleep. And one of the reasons we get depressed is we don't get enough sleep. So oftentimes, when you're not seeing the progress that you want to see, you got to fix the stomach. you got to fix the gut. And we can take the stomach, if it's pushed up against the diaphragm, and gently pull it down away from the diaphragm, relaxes the whole digestive system. Many times that kicks in bowel function, which is great. But more importantly, it breaks down the proteins. Now, you may not have enough stomach acid. Because acid in the stomach sends a message to the little valve, the valve between your throat and your stomach, to say close. Food is in here closed so the food doesn't reflux back up into your throat. If you don't have enough acid, the, the valve isn't getting the message from the acid so it stays open. And that can be the cause of acid reflux. So many times it's not that you have too much stomach acid, you have too little, and the stomach's out of alignment. All right, got to go to a break real, real quick, folks. If you have any healthcare questions, send them to me through my website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. Send me questions, search the website. We have over three, 4,000 hours of information out there. It's all free. Just put it in the search bar. Make an appointment. That's really the best thing you can do, either virtually or in person, drjoe.com. We can book it. We can usually get you in the next couple of days. Uh, the supplements we're going to talk about, Super Green Essential Source, Omega-3 Fatty Acid, Digestive Enzymes, those are all on the website as well, drjoe.com. Follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito, at Dr. Joe Esposito. We post at least once a day. You're going to get so much information, so much helpful information in one-minute bites. This way you don't have to sit and listen too long. One-minute bites, at Dr. Joe Esposito. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, drjoe.com. We'll be right back. 
Wow, I got so much more to cover. Any questions? There are a few. Um, starting out is depression helped uh, by a better diet. Yes, that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. So, so the diet's real, real key. I know I didn't cover that in the beginning, but yeah, we're going to cover that a lot more in the next half. What else? Uh, and then would you consider depression contagious? Uh, it can be. Uh, not contagious in the, in, the, in, the lot, in the usual way you think about it. Like I caught it from Garrett. Garrett had a virus, gave it to me or vice versa. But if you're around depressed people, it can make you depressed. Absolutely. And so that's why you have to look out for your own health if you're dealing with somebody who isn't willing to look out for their own. There's also a lot of studies on um, music as an influence. Yes. Yeah, that's covered. I was going to cover that if I had time about music uh, being very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Or the opposite. Or the opposite, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Put on some meatloaf and go jamming. I mean, that's what I used to do. I mean, I, I, meatloaf brings back very good memories for me. I know it sounds funny, but it was my, in high school, I was a big meatloaf. I still am a meatloaf fan. But uh, it brings back good memories. So by listening to that, it kicks in a part of the brain that releases endorphins that are pleasurable for me. So that's, it can be good or bad, yeah. What else? Where are you located? I'm right here. I'm upstairs in the office now. <laughs> uh, we have offices at the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. That's Atlanta, Georgia, if you're listening around the world. Um, but we can do virtual meetings if, you, if we need to. But uh, I, I only see patients in the Marietta office uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, but we can do a virtual meeting anytime you'd like. What would be some good foods for depression? Uh, we're going to cover that coming up next. So hang on. Teaser. Is exercise a good remedy for depression? That's if coming so, up next, too. You guys are kind of exercise so hip you are. Uh, it depends what works best for you. Now, at my age, middle 60s, I can't do what I used to do. It, it pretty much. I used to play hockey. I used to play football. I, I can't do those things anymore. Um, so you have to find out what works best for you. But in motion is going to be the key. And being outside, it's actually something called forest bathing. I should cover that. That's a good point. Forest bathing. Isn't that a funny word? But just being outside has been shown to help the neurotransmitters in the brain. Yeah, there's a, there's a new research group, not necessarily new, but a research group has a new study out on earthing mm -hmm. uh, and all the, uh, all the benefits. Earthing, yeah, just being outside. Yeah, and if you do barefoot, even better. But I don't know what, what being in the woods barefoot. But yeah, um, so exercise is just getting outside. The best, you know, you can work out. You can do aerobics and you can do running and you can do cycling. Uh, those are all great. But being outside is going to be the, whatever you're doing, try to do it outside. What else? Uh, I would just add that uh, I don't remember where I read it, but a long time ago I read that uh, if you're worried about keeping up with the, with the Jones, uh -huh. um, consider that... Uh, on average, seven out of ten houses on any street are living well above their means. Oh yeah, I yeah, I remember learning learning about that too. Because I, I remember uh, there's a place there's a street in Atlanta called West Paces Ferry, and that's like the street to be on. The governor's mansion is there. And I was talking to a friend of mine who's a real estate agent, and I said, "There's so many houses on this street, always for sale, big mansions. Why do, why are they always for sale?" He said. Just what Garrett said. A lot of people go live way above their means. Like Garrett said, seven out of ten, and I'm, I'm sure that statistic is probably right. Seven out of ten people living way above their means, and so they're miserable. They just look like they're not. So you know, there's a what was it uh, 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 the Millionaire Next Door? I think was the book, and talks about most of the people that are millionaires. You'd never know they're millionaires. They live a very humble life, very simple life. Uh, the people that are flashing it, either they really are rich or they're just trying to fake it. They're posers. So, yeah, don't worry about other people. Keep your house clean, though. So, <laughs> mow your lawn. What else? That's it. Okay. Next segment. Next segment. Here we go. All right. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you're with us. What we're talking about today are surprising causes of depression, links to it, truths and facts and myths, and what you can do about it, which is the most important thing. All of us have one thing in common. All of us will suffer bouts of depression throughout our lives. Now, we said there's regular depression, there's clinical depression. Clinical depression is when the brain actually changes its structure and it, it doesn't go away. It's long lasting. It has adverse effects on your life long term. Now, again, somebody dies. I'm depressed. I'm Italian. I come from a big family. I've been to a lot of funerals in my life. And it's very, very depressing. The closer they are, of course, usually the worse it is. But over time, time heals. I remember my dad passed away. My mother said something that was really profound. 
She's, and they were married almost 50 years, just shy of 50 years. She says, I don't feel like an Esposito anymore. And I, I said, I'm not sure I understand. She goes, your father was the link to the Esposito family, which is a huge family, by the way. She goes, with him gone, I, I don't feel like an Esposito anymore. She says, but I've learned too, my mother said, a brilliant woman. She said, don't do anything drastic for one year after a major life trauma. Don't change your name. Don't run out and get married. Don't, uh, you know, go move. Give yourself time to heal in that environment. And it's very good advice because it takes a while to heal. And that's okay. As long as you feel like you're moving and, and progressing forward and you're starting to heal. You laugh again. You want to go out again. You go on a date. You spend time with kids. You play with a dog. You start to see these little changes occur that the body is healing. And it's perfectly normal to have that kind of depression. And like we said earlier, it's actually good for you. It means your body is functioning in a normal realm. If you felt nothing, that's a concern. So you can do things to try to deal with the depression. And getting outside uh, is one of the big things. Somebody just asked me that question. What are some things you can do? Being outside, it's called forest bathing or earthing. Just being outside is extremely helpful, walking through the forest. So I remember when mom passed, I went for walks because I knew that this was going to be good for me. I didn't want to. I didn't feel good about it. I just wanted to sit around and mope, but I went for walks, and it helped tremendously. So getting outside is great. Watching your diet. We covered that a little bit earlier, but this is the one thing that you have total control over. Now, the thing that bothers me, this is you know my, my comment on society, is that if you, again, being from a big Italian family, when somebody died, everybody brought over food. Casserole, veal parmesan, meatball and spaghetti, cheeses. And it was way too much because you couldn't eat it. And a lot of it went bad. You had to give it back. You gave it to other people. You know, oh, Aunt Mary gave me this. I'm going to give it to Aunt Marie. You know, we had a, a cycle of food around. But don't eat the bad food when you're feeling bad. And then afterwards was the repass. I don't know if you, I don't know what you call it. Repass is after the funeral, you know, you took people out to dinner. Anyone who came to the funeral, you took them out to dinner. And, you go to the repast, and then here we are eating all these bad foods and drinking bad, bad liquor and, and sodas and things like this. So understand we go through depression, whatever it is, what's the steps that you can do? I know you want to eat those comfort foods. I get that. you got to say no. Or I'll give you an alternative. I'm going to eat a big salad, and then I'm going to have comfort food. At least get something in your body so that your body says, I don't need any more of that junk. Avoid the alcohol, avoid the drugs, avoid the smoking, uh, please, because your body needs time to heal when we go through depression. Now, again, clinical depression, it takes time to heal, but you still want to do those things. We talked about B vitamins earlier, and B vitamins are so important for brain function and nerve function. Now, as a pain management expert, as a nutritionist, as a chiropractor, as a non-surgical orthopedist, I deal a lot with nervous systems and nerve issues. In fact, nonstop, literally 24 hours a day, I'm thinking about the nervous system. And so B vitamins are so vital, and so many people don't get them. My opinion is this. If you're over the age of 30, probably anybody, you should be taking at least a B12 supplement. Because your stomach produces uh, something called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor allows you to absorb the B B12. As you get older, the intrinsic factor drops. And one of the reasons is your stomach acid drops. So you need to get that B12 absorption through intrinsic factor. That's why some people have to take it sublingually under their tongue. Some people need injections of it just to get it into the system. So that's why I suggest taking a supplement every day. I take Dr. Joe's B Complex every day. Also, we have a lot of B vitamins in Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Now, Dr. Joe's Essential Source is like the granddaddy of all supplements. I created this to make it simple and easy so if people not willing to do anything else, at least take Essential Source. It's prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin, uh, raw fruits and vegetables. So I can't imagine everyone not taking at least Super Greens and Essential Source. Super Greens has chlorella and spirulina in it, which helps detoxify the liver. And so much depression the research is coming out, has been out for years, is linked to your digestive system. So many other health issues are linked to your digestive system. I would say all health issues. I think it was Hippocrates that said, look to the, um, said, look to the spine for the cause of all disease. And then they also talked about the colon 
as the cause of disease. So if you can get the nervous system working and you can get the digestive system working, even thousands of years ago, physicians understood we have to get the nervous system, digestive system working for the body to heal. We lost that. We lost that in modern medicine. And I want you to think about bringing it back into your life. So put at least a minimum super greens and essential source into the body. Uh, I would also say omega-3 fatty acids are vital for brain function, and they're essential fatty acids. When I say essential, it means you have to get them from an outside source. Okay, there's omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Those are essential. You get them from an outside source. Omega-9 fatty acids, your body can produce, so it's not an essential fatty acid. So if the word is essential before a nutrient, it, does, it, it, does, it has to have that meaning that you have to get it from an outside source. And omega-3 fatty acids have to be gotten from an outside source. So you want to get those omega-3 fatty acids into your system. I take Dr. Joe's omega-3s every day. Algae is the purest form of omega-3s. Fish oil, eh, it has it. Chances are that it was contaminated or is contaminated with mercury. It goes rancid pretty quickly. It's not in a phospholipid form. The liver has to convert it into phospholipid form so it could use it. Algae oil is the purest, cleanest phospholipid form, omega-3 source there is. So I take that every day, not just for a mental health, but for overall health. The B-complex, so important for energy too. A lot of us are tired all the time. We just don't have enough B vitamins. Take a B-complex, we feel better. Uh, so there's a lot of supplements that you can take. I'm going to talk about the whole protocol in just a second. Uh, but we're talking about depression today, by the way, folks. And it's not something that you can just laugh at. It's not something you could just muscle through. You know, I'm going to suck it up and pull myself out of it. Again, minor depression, yes. Severe clinical depression, no. But I believe the missing link, I said this earlier, the missing link in healthcare is the nervous system, digestive system, and diet. Those three things put together will change your life and change every, it will change healthcare forever. And it would drop the cost exponentially for everyone involved. We still need healthcare. We still need hospitals. We still need every type of doctor there is out there. But you now are starting to take control of your own health by changing your nervous system, digestive system, and diet. When I say nervous system, I'm talking about structural issues. If you have pinched nerves, if you have scoliosis, if you have muscle spasms, you might have back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, sciatica. That's a pinched nerve issue. Depends what causes it, but the number one treatment, uh, most effective, least expensive, is chiropractic care. Now, maybe you need surgery. Maybe you need physical therapy. Maybe you need injections. I get that. But let's start out with the most effective, least expensive treatment, which is chiropractic care. If that doesn't work... Let's go to a next level, a next level, a next level. But don't waste your time and your money jumping to the end game. I have so many patients that have come in and had surgery and had their disc surgery, and it wasn't the disc, it was the facet. It was the bones where the, the bones come together in the joint. And the medium branch nerve got pinched, and they removed the disc. It didn't do a darn thing for that. Then they get a few chiropractic adjustments, take the pressure off the facet, and boom, suddenly the pain is gone. So let's start out conservative when it comes to health care in most cases. That's my approach. So supplement-wise, when it comes to depression, we're going to talk about that in a second, but you got to make sure the digestive system is working. If you're eating things like animal products that have antibiotics in it, antibiotics, they feed them to the animals. That's how it's done. But those antibiotics can get into your body and can start killing off the good bacteria. And the good bacteria in your colon directly uh, uh, function with the brain to help with emotions. So... Uh, chlorinated water. If you swim in a chlorine swimming pool, chlorine can kill off bacteria. Now, one dip in a pool, not going to kill you. But if you swim every day, that chlorine can be acting as an antibiotic in your body. If you spray uh, glyphosate, weed killer, it acts as an a, a, a antibiotic and kills off the bacteria in your colon. You're seeing it. Uh, you know it's an issue when the, when the lawyers are advertising for it, right? Have you been exposed to glyphosate? Do you have these conditions? You should call us. You may be eligible for compensation. I just heard a commercial today, first time ever, and it said, have you taken these weight loss medications? Uh, semaglutide is one of them. There's another one. If you've taken these, there can be severe side effects. You may be eligible for compensation. Call our law firm. Now, this stuff just came out recently, you know, relatively recently when it comes to drugs, and a lot of people are taking it for weight loss. And it works. It cuts your appetite down. You lose weight. However, the side effects may be serious and permanent. And so interesting that they're jumping on a bandwagon right away. They used to wait for a while. Now they're, boom, drug comes out, let's sue somebody. Uh, I'm not big on suing people. 
I never have sued anybody in my life. But you got to understand that the side effects can be very, de very detrimental, including deadly. So back to depression. I kind of went off on a, on, a, on a tangent there. Family history is not destiny. Somebody said, is depression contagious? And I kind of like that question. It's not contagious in a traditional way that I have a virus and I cough on you and you get my virus. Uh, it can be that if you're surrounded by someone who's depress depressed, it can make you depressed because you want to help them. They may not want to get help. It may be sad that you're seeing them, you know, spiral down uh, into the abyss and uh, there's nothing you can do about it. So is it contagious? Yeah, not in a traditional sense, but the answer is yes. And so that's why you have to take care of yourself if you're dealing with somebody with depression so that you can not be sucked into it because it's pretty serious. And then if you can't take care of them, who's going to take care of you? Uh, it's not a part of aging, but as people get older, things change. And I see it. We all see it as we get older. We can't do what we used to do. We can't run like we used to. We can't clean the house like we used to. We can't stay up like we used to and party like we used to. And I can see where that could become depressing. So depressing. But you want to be able to say, you know what? This is okay. I look at my life as a book. And my father always talked about the book of life. And whatever happens, he says, ah, it's in the book. When it's time to go, it's in the book. And so not a religious man, but he always talked about it's in the book. And so I look at my life as chapters, and as different chapters come, I turn the page. And if you look back on your life, you can probably think about that. This was a chapter when you did this, the chapter when you had big, long hair, and then you were skinny, and then you were fat, and then you were uh, uh, happy, and then you were sad. And so there are going to be chapters in your life. You turn the page in those chapters. But aging does not necessarily mean that that chapter is going to lead to depression because you have to take care of yourself. You have to take responsibility. And I, you know, that's a big word. You got to take responsibility for your life, for your diet, for your actions, for your environment, for the friends you hang out with, for the job you have, for the relationships you're in. And that's easy said, but not always easy done. Because you think about it and you say, yeah, but I've, I've known, I don't know, Bob for 30 years now. Maybe Bob is not the best person to be in your life anymore. And you have to do some soul searching to find that out. I posted recently on social media about peanut butter. You would have thought I slapped somebody's child. I said, you know, peanut butter has omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids can lead to inflammation. It also has a mycotoxin, which is a fungus that can cause allergic reactions. And most people are like, wow, that's really great. Thank you. And some people, I've eaten peanut butter all my life, and you don't know what you're talking about. You're an idiot. Social media is rough. And I thought, just because you don't know, didn't know this, and just because you ate peanut butter all your life, that doesn't mean it's right. So let's sit back, let's do a reevaluation, and let's say, gosh, maybe I've learned something new today. And so you can do that in your life too, because that can avoid a lot of depression. Maybe I learned something new today, and maybe it's time that I reevaluate. Maybe it is time I start taking omega-3 fatty acid supplements. Maybe I should take B-complex. Maybe I should stay away from the alcohol. Maybe the meat that I'm eating is the saturated fat is clumping my red blood cells together so I can't carry oxygen to my brain, and that's affecting my ability to do things, and that makes me depressed. So take proactive steps to get well. How many people are in pain? Raise your hands. A lot of you are. Pain is the number two reason why people call out from work. Number one reason is cold and flu. Number two is pain, back pain. Chiropractic care, most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. Chronic pain is very depressing. I have a traumatic brain injury. I know about chronic pain. So if you have pain, get it fixed. And pain is a warning sign. It's telling you something's wrong because 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. So you can have a pinched nerve and not know it. So if you have pain, come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We can get you in sometimes the same day, certainly within the same week. But we want to get to the cause of the pain, not just treat the symptoms. I'm okay treating symptoms, but I always want to get to the cause so I don't have to worry about treating the symptoms. So drjoe.com, you can book an appointment right now online if you'd like to. We'd love to. We can also do virtual consultations. We can't do chiropractic care virtually, of course, but we can do nutrition consultations. We do lifestyle consultations. We can talk about what we need to do to get your life better. Uh, and so drjoe.com, just book your appointments right now. We accept people with all insurances. Now, most, some insurance, most insurances cover, but some insurances don't. That's an insurance problem. You need to get a different insurance policy. Well, and I've had people say this. Well, my eyeglasses aren't covered by my insurance, so I'm not going to get new ones. Well, you need them to see. 
well, my surgery isn't covered by my insurance. I'm not going to get it. You need it to live. Don't let insurance companies dictate your life. They're bullies. They decide who gets care and who doesn't. And literally, they decide who lives and who dies. I've had people with cancer that need cancer treatments. No, nope, we're not going to cover it. It's not medically necessary. How much more medically necessary do you need? I have a tumor that needs to be removed. Not medically necessary. I've had people go to the emergency room with a fracture. It wasn't covered by insurance. It wasn't medically necessary. It's a fracture. So the game is they deny it and they hope you walk away. If you don't walk away and you fight it, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But don't let insurance companies dictate your life. So drjoe.com, book the appointment. The supplements we're talking about, super green, essential source, nitric oxide opens up blood supply to the brain. I didn't cover that yet, but you need that. Uh, Omega-3 fatty acids, B-complex, all on the website, drjoe.com. Don't take nitric oxide if you have low blood pressure. It'll make the blood pressure lower. If you have normal or high blood pressure, I love it. It opens up the blood supply. It increases circulation to the brain, to the sex organs, to the heart, the lungs, the liver. Gives me energy. Gives me brain thought, uh, clarity. Uh, really neat stuff, nitric oxide. Lasts about six to eight hours a dose. So I take, it some, I take it once a day. If I have a big event coming up, going on a date, I'm going to go out and do a lecture. I got a radio show to do. Um, I will then take a second dose later on in the day. But drjoe.com has all the supplements. We'll ship them to you next day, next business day, or come pick them up, save some shipping. But make an appointment to come see us. Let's check the nervous system. Let's check the digestive system. Let's check the diet. Let's see what supplements might benefit you. Maybe you're wasting your money on supplements. I've had people come in and say, listen, you don't need this, 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 and this. I said, Doc, I'm making money coming here. I was taking these supplements all the time. I didn't need them. Wow, this is great. So drjoe.com, we'd love to see you as a patient. Um, and we can book you pretty quickly. So we're talking today about s- sneaky causes of, of depression, uh, truths, myths, and then what you can do about it. Uh, depression is not necessarily dementia. I've had people come in, somebody brought their mother in and said, I think she's depressed. And I did an analysis and I said, I think we need a check, uh, an evaluation on this woman. I think she has dementia. And sure enough, that was the case. Uh, talking about it oftentimes helps. I don't want to talk about it. I understand There are certain times I don't want to talk about it. I want to be left alone. But over time, uh, it's it's ill-advised to just dwell on it and not talk about it. Talking helps tremendously. If you don't have a good friend, get a therapist. Talk to your therapist. You can do virtual therapy calls now too if you want to. But talk to somebody that you trust because very few things worse in life that can make depression worse if you're betrayed by someone. You trusted somebody with your money, with your uh, uh, health, with your uh, family, and they betray you. And that sucks. I was raised Italian. We we, we didn't betray each other. There's consequences if we did. Um, But it happens. And that can really have an adverse effect on your mental psyche and your depression. So just be careful who you're talking to. And that's why if you don't have somebody in your close circle you can talk to, get yourself a therapist. And then they can give you advice as well. Uh, Positive thinking may help. But here's something I want you to consider. Don't talk negative about yourself ever. Self-deprecation. Now, every now and then, it's kind of funny and silly. But if you self-deprecate, it's usually a sign that there's something that's very insecure in your life. And I learned this years ago because I, you know, I was always the, you know, my my friend uh, Larry used to call me uh, showtime, showtime, showtime. Come on, let's go to a party. So I was always the life at a party. I told jokes. And I realized that a little self-deprecation was one thing, but when people went overboard with it, your brain can't tell the difference, so they say. I don't have any scientific research on this. The difference between a fact and what's not a fact. So just be careful about how you talk about yourself. And if you are, do an analysis and say, why am I doing this? That can actually feed your depression. Uh, We talked earlier about being around teens. Please be careful around teens. If they start getting depressed... Uh, social media is a big trigger for depression. Uh, there's a lot of bullies out there, you know, keyboard courage. Um, just be careful because people don't know who they, people have fake names on social media and they can attack you. You just delete it, delete and block them. Okay. They have more issues than you'll ever have. And so don't worry about that. Uh, exercise. Somebody asked about exercise. Is it good for you? The answer is exactly, uh, that yes, it's very good for you. Get out and move because the body needs circulation. Now, a while ago, I did a show and I talked about the cross crawl. And now if you're listening on radio, of course, or a podcast, um, you can't see me. But Google cross crawl. And it's a great exercise to do every single day. I do it every day. 
if you can do 100 cross crawls a day, and a cross crawl takes about a second to do, if you can do, you don't have to do it all at once. You can do 10 at a time, do five at a time, you can do 100 times. You'll be amazed how your stomach starts to flatten out. Your love handles start to shrink. Your energy level goes up. Your bowels work more efficiently. Your brain starts to work more efficiently. So cross crawl, and what it is is you, you can do it standing up or sitting down. Bring your right elbow to your left knee and your left elbow to your right knee. Right elbow, left knee, left elbow, right knee. And if you can do this, do it five times a day. Do as many as you can. I posted it on a, on a social media post. People are like, I can't do it 30 times an hour. That's crazy. I have no time to do anything else. Again, information without emotion is how you want to live your life. I'd respond, it takes about 30 seconds. If you can't give me 30 seconds every hour, you probably have a scheduling conflict. Give me 10 seconds every hour, you probably have a scheduling conflict. But the cross crawl, if you can do cross crawl outside, it's amazing. When I'm in a swimming pool, I do it. In my uh, complex where I live, there's a, a saltwater swimming pool. So I'll go out there, and that's a workout. I'll hit the pool for 20 minutes and do cross crawls. I'll do 100, sometimes 200, um, and get some sun. Make sure the sun is hitting you because the sun helps produce vitamin D. It also stimulates the pineal gland. Getting outside is so key to depression, and sunlight is so important. Uh, with sunlight, I always say you're out there until your skin starts to feel warm and red, then stop. For white folks, about 20 minutes. If you're darker skin, maybe 25 or 30 minutes a day, that's it. It's all the sun you want to take. 90% of visual aging is related to sunlight exposure in most people. So uh, I remember years ago, I used to date a girl. She was a model. She was much older than me. And she was Miss Wisconsin, and she was an anchor at one of the major TV stations. And she looked so young. And I said to her, I said, what's your secret? She's 11 years older than me. And she said, never put your face in the sun. And that was, I was in my 20s at the time. And I remember thinking that, what, it really stuck with me. So don't let your face get tan. You can put it, I, I look at the sun for about two or three minutes with my eyes closed, and that's the most sun my face gets. Then I wear a big hat to cover up. Hey, folks, I got a lot more to cover, but I'm, I'm out of time. If you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. All the supplements we talked about, Super Green, Essential Source, Nitric Oxide, B-Complex, Omega-3s are on the website, drjoe.com. If you didn't get them all, just email me. I'll tell you what they are. Follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito. We post every single day. We get about five or 10,000 followers a day because the information is one little minute tidbits of health. So we want you to be uh, informed throughout the week as well. If you're a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it, we post twice a week. So Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, follow us at Dr. Joe Esposito. You're going to get so much information because my goal, as it has been for the 38 years I've been in practice, I want to naturally get you well and keep you well without drugs and surgery. DrJoe.com. Catch you next time. All right. That was fun. You have questions? I have answers. Maybe. A few questions. Um... Sometimes I experience depression after fun events like birthdays and holidays. Mm -hmm. Any advice? Yeah, it could be that your body isn't producing the, – the neurotransmitters in the brain aren't reacting. Now, one of two things happening. One, you, you're expecting more, and when you leave the fun event, it's like that was so much fun, and then you crash. You have this dopamine rush at the fun event, and then you crash. So it could be a dopamine issue, uh, and it could be if you're not experiencing fun at the event – then it could be a digestive and, again, dopamine issue as well. So you want to look at your digestive system. I would say let's get you on the supplement, Super Green Essential Source, Nitric Oxide, B-Complex, and Omega-3s, and do that for a month, and let's see what happens. I wouldn't be surprised if you see some dramatic changes. What is your opinion on taking glucose? No need for glucose. No, there's plenty of – your body produces glucose. Uh, even if you have no sugar in your body, your body uses protein and creates gluconeogenesis. No need to take glucose additionally. What else? And that is pretty much it for today. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate you being here. Uh, a lot of fun. And any questions, drjoe.com. I'll answer them for you. See you next time.